Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP Tom Morgan. There are two big updates to Microsoft Graph that really affect Microsoft Teams developers right now. We're going to talk about both of them. We're going to talk about shared channel support and also new activity reports. First, let's look at shared channels. There are 10 new API calls available to developers right now that can be used to perform basic CRUD operations around shared channels. CRUD is an acronym that means create, read, update, delete, and just kind of speaks to those transactional calls that you can make with APIs. So you can now list channels that are shared channels, you can list channels that are not shared channels, and you can also make an API call to get both shared and non-shared channels together with enough information in the body and the response to tell you about those channels, which ones are shared and which ones are not. You can also list which teams have been shared with a specific channel, and also the allowed members uh, and the people that are allowed to see that shared channel. You can go the other way as well. So for a given user, you can then go and see which uh, teams and channels they are a member of. And there's a new terminology here. You can see which teams and channels that user is associated with. And that now means both being a member of a channel in the home tenant where the user is uh, residing, but also uh, means being associated with a shared channel, having access to a shared channel. Uh, so that now is something called association and a user can be associated with a shared channel or a normal channel. Using the APIs, you can also unshare and remove channels. You can also add new members to, uh, to a shared channel as well. There is a create shared channel API call, but it doesn't yet work for everyone. So. Microsoft recommend not using it today and instead creating shared channels manually through the Teams client just for now until they get that worked out. Finally, there's a check access API. Now you can use this to see if a specific user has got access to a specific shared channel. I've got a blog post which lists all of these APIs, what they do, how you use them, and also the known issues with them as well. Now let's look at Microsoft Teams activity reports. So the existing get user detail report has been updated and now includes the tenant name. So what does this mean? It means that the results that are returned in this report for shared channels include users from other tenants. Um, and it means that those users from those other tenants can be identified because the tenant name is now included in the detail set. So if you are already using the get user detail report, just be aware that that report is now going to contain information about uh, uses in potentially other tenants if you have shared channels. The get activity counts and the get activity total counts report have new data in them. So there's new information, new data, new columns um, available with some really useful information in, including things like the number of instant messages sent, the number of replies sent, the audio, video, screen sharing, duration times, number of meetings organized, number of meetings attended. So that's very, very useful information to have. And there's also a brand new report as well, which is called the Get Total Distribution Activity Counts Report, brilliant name, returns data that's actually quite similar to the Get Activity Total Counts Report. However, the structure of the data is slightly different. Whereas the Get Activity Total Counts Report will give you data on a day-by-day -day basis for every day in the reporting period, this new report gives you one set of numbers aggregated across the whole period. So this makes it very good for very high level dashboards or just top level reporting on usage in a specific period. With this report, you are gonna get one set of numbers back for the whole reporting period um, with totals uh, for just that cover that entire period. You aren't gonna get a day by day breakdown like you, like you do with the Get Activity Total Counts report. Okay, so that is a quick summary of the big API changes that have happened for Microsoft Teams developers recently. I hope it's been useful. Don't forget, I've got blog posts about these. You can follow me on Twitter or LinkedIn for more information. Please subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful. Whatever it is you're doing today, have a great one, and I will talk to you again next time.